What's up everyone, Patrick here, welcome back. Moving on to the next question. We gotta take this inequality here and we have to solve it without a calculator. So notice it's a kind of ugly one because we have decimals and fractions mixed up with it. So we got x minus four plus 0.6. When is that gonna be less than or equal to negative 0.6 times negative three x plus five over two? Now, if you're not gonna use a calculator, what I would recommend is taking any decimals and then converting them to fractions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take this decimal, 0.6, convert it to a fraction. Now 0 0.6, that's like what? Six over 10, which is the same as three over five. So this would be three over five. And then this negative 0.6 is gonna be negative three over five. And then we'll have negative three X plus five over two. So I would just work with fractions um, because there's a lot of times where the decimal that you're gonna get, the answer if you were to use a calculator would be like a, um, a non-terminating decimal. And so without a calculator, that's impossible to get. Versus with fractions, you can always get fractions without a calculator. So to, uh, to solve this here, what we'll do, um, let's rewrite this left side. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and distribute it in the bracket. So negative three over five times negative three x, this negative three is like over one. That would give us what? Nine over five x. And this times that would give us minus uh, 15 over 10, like that. And then the minus 15 over 10, that simplifies to negative three over two. And you could see it as well because the fives here would cancel out, so we'd have negative three over two left when we multiply those. And then from here, what I'll do is I'll bring all of the x values to one side, all of the other values to the other. So this x I'm gonna bring over to the right, this negative three over two I'll bring over to the left. So I'll have negative four plus three over five plus three over two. And then I'll have nine over five x minus x when I bring that to the right side. And then from here, what you can do, you can work with these fractions. Um, personally, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna multiply everything by the lowest common denominator to get rid of the fractions. Just make sure that that value you're multiplying is positive so then you don't have to switch this sign. We could have also did that up here, but I decided to expand first and then put all the variables on one side, all the numbers on the other. So. If we multiply this by 10, this by 10, this by 10. By the way, you don't have to necessarily do this step here. Right, you can work with the fractions. Just make sure you're getting the same answer that I'm gonna get at the end. So negative four times 10 is negative 40. Five goes into 10 twice times three gives us six. Two goes into 10 five times times three gives us 15. And then uh, this would be, five goes into 10 twice. This would be times, that would be two times nine is 18. And then this would be minus 10x like that. So notice we would get eight X on this side. And then over here we would have negative 40 plus six plus 15. So that's negative 40 plus 21, which would give us negative 19. Divide both sides by eight. So notice that x has to be greater than or equal to negative 19 over 8. Right, which is like x in decimals, uh, that would be negative 2.3 over 8 would be 375. Right, so notice it would be three decimals, so just getting that decimal value can be a little tricky, the algebra would be tricky if we like took this and converted it to 2.5. And what if this was like one over three? How do we convert that to decimals? Because that 0.33 keeps repeating forever, right? So for those repeating kind of decimals, I think it's just easier 
to use fractions whenever you're doing something like this without a calculator. All right, so that there ends up being the final answer. Again, many different ways you can go about this. Just make sure that you're getting that same solution.